Hello, everyone, and welcome to another monthly wrap with me, Alan Hibbard. Today, we are looking at February 2024, and I've got the news and numbers for you that are going to affect your financial future. So let's dive in. I want to start with the prices of gold and silver. What did they do in the month of February? Starting with silver, it basically oscillated between $23.50 and $22.00. And since I'm recording this a couple days after February ended, we actually know that the price of silver has broken through. It's around $24 now, right now on the website. Okay, about $24 an ounce. And gold is well over $2,100, looking very strong. But in the month of February, what did gold do? Well, it bounced down and came back up in a nice V pattern. And as we know now, in the next couple of days, it's actually off the charts here, well over $2,100. So you might wonder what happened, like what's going on with gold? What happened in the month of February? And is that going to affect the price moving forward? Yes, I will tell you what that is. You might think that it was the Federal Reserve either raising or lowering rates because that's usually what happens when we get this bounce. Actually, I believe it was something else. SSR mining shares plunged 61% after a landslide at a Turkish mine. This basically happened on this day. And then the price of gold went up. And so, yes, there was a landslide at a mine. Um, you can find a video of it. It was actually captured on video. It might be tough to see here, but you guys can check that out on your own time if you're interested. And of course, if a mine has to shut down, yes, it's tragic, obviously. What that means for the price of gold is that it's probably going to go up because the metal becomes more scarce, supply and demand. Similar with the price of gold, we have digital gold, Bitcoin, moving up a ton in the month of February, up 42%. This is like kind of unbelievable. Started around 43,000. It's up to around 62, 63,000. And I believe that the rise in price here is actually for a similar reason. Basically, that scarcity that we see in gold when a mine shuts down in Bitcoin, that scarcity is created artificially through the halving, which is coming up in a month or two. So I believe that the price of both gold and digital gold are going to be rising, but only time will tell. Speaking of things that are rising, the S&P 500 breaking new records in February. It smashed through 5,000 points, not once, not twice, but three times in the month of February of reaching an all-time high, up almost 4% on the month. Very similarly, the Dow Jones breaking record highs. It made it through 39,000 points and it's two, about two, two and a half percent away from 40,000. That is quite the milestone, 40,000 Dow. Amazing. And the NASDAQ also hitting record highs. It smashed through 16,000 and it continues to rise. That was up 4.8% on the month. And it was led largely by NVIDIA. I want to talk about NVIDIA briefly as just one, uh, one case here. It was up roughly 25% of the month. We don't have the number here on this chart, but just doing the math briefly from about 620 to 770, that's about 25%. So that's pretty high. Is it a bubble? I don't know. You tell me. NVIDIA's market cap rivals major economies, ranking 11th globally. Look at this. You've got the market cap, or, or excuse me, the GDP of like the top 10 countries in the world. And NVIDIA, if it were a country, it would be country number 11, just shy of $2 trillion. That is super, super high. And that's ahead of countries like Russia. Imagine that. <laughs> One company with a higher market cap than the GDP of Russia. Wow. And keep your eye on these countries here. I'm going to come back to them in just a second. This is getting ridiculous. Nancy Pelosi's NVIDIA call options have made her $1.7 million in 92 days. $1.7 million in 92 days, more than eight times her annual salary of about a quarter million. With NVIDIA's all-time high, her in-the-money calls are now up 82%. An American making $60,000 a year requires about 30 years to make that amount. She's doing it in a quarter of a year. So 120 times as fast, 120 times as fast. And I don't think it just happens one time. This is a pattern that repeats. So this just gives you a sense of how out of control things have gotten. And we've got a, a short clip here. We're not going to play the whole thing. Politicians and billionaires are selling their stocks. So yes, they enjoy options. They enjoy stocks, but sometimes they do get out of the market. So here we have Tommy Tuberville, Senator. We have Nancy Pelosi, who I just mentioned. 
Congresswoman. We also have Jeff Bezos selling another $2 billion of Amazon shares, and Bill Gates is getting rid of his entire portfolio. Historically, the movement of billionaires of this magnitude indicate the imminence of a stock market crash. So this is all happening in February. What's going to happen in March? I have no idea. I have no idea, but we're going to keep watching this. And so the politicians here, we see what they do with their own money. The question is, what do they do with your money? Because don't forget, that's their job. Their job is to manage your money. Well, it's official. <laughs> The government interest expense crosses $1 trillion in the month of February. Look at this. This is shooting up like a rocket. And you got to ask yourself, does this look like something that's running out of steam? Or does this look like something that's blasting off into outer space with no end in sight? To me, it looks like this is going to keep rising. And this is something that you and I pay for and our children and our grandchildren. And it's hard to control. Looking forward, is it going to continue? Well, we have a tweet here from Lynn Alden. She's she's showing us a graphic from uh, the uh, the CBO, sorry, the Congressional Budget Office. Basically, this is the 30-year projection of what they think they're going to spend. And you can see that even the assume no recession for 30 years scenario is bearish. So their rosiest forecast for the next 30 years basically is that they're going to spend more and spend more and spend more. So the deficit is going to grow, interest is going to grow, and federal debt held by the public is going to grow off the charts. By the way, this peak back here was World War II. We're already at those levels, and we're not in World War III. And look how out of control they're forecasted to go by the government itself. This is a government forecast. So even their best case scenario is absolutely horrible. And this assumes no recessions, no war, no problem. Very unrealistic. And you might ask, well, how good are they at predicting their own expenses? Ha! <laughs> okay, look at this. Uh, we're not going to look at this whole table here, but I want to zoom in on two numbers. Basically, what did they predict for 2023 and what actually happened? Well, they predicted a deficit of negative 900 billion, basically negative 1 trillion. They predicted a deficit of 1 trillion. The actual deficit was $2 trillion. They predicted one. The actual was two. They were off by 100%. And they thought it was going to be not so bad. It was actually really bad. So again, uh, when, we, when we look at something like that, we think the actual line could be twice as bad, twice as downward sloping. It's not pretty. Absolutely not pretty. That might explain why the U.S. 10-year is looking less and less attractive to investors. You can see it going down like this. This, of course, is rising yields. Yields rose by 9.8%, but that means falling prices. That's why we look at an inverted chart here. So falling prices, nobody wants this investment, okay? 10-year treasuries, not looking very good. This could continue into the future. We will see. And what are other countries doing? Uh, Germany, Japan, and the United Kingdom are all in recession. Germany, Japan, and the United Kingdom are all in recession. Okay, these are three out of the top five economies in the world, right? The other two being the U.S. and China. So these are three out of the top five economies in the world are in recession now. And I want to mention something. The world is becoming increasingly connected economically. And you can see here two thick red lines, two thick vertical red lines up and down, right? This is the 2008 recession and the 2020 pandemic recession. This shows that when one country has a recession, they tend to all have a recession at the same time. Whereas before, that wasn't necessarily the case. There's a lot of gaps, gaps in the red lines, gaps. But now... When one country has a recession, they tend to all have a recession. The exception here was Sweden in 2020. Basically, it was the only country that didn't shut down its own economy. But otherwise, that seems to be the norm. So if you're going to tell me that three major economies are all in recession, I'm going to conclude that all the other countries are going to be in recession any day now. Are there any exceptions? 
maybe, maybe breaking news from February. Uh, Argentina received a balanced budget in January for the first time in over a decade. President Javier Malay achieved it without congressional action by freezing spending at 2023 levels, cutting many agency budgets by over 50% in real terms. So this doesn't guarantee that they'll stay out of recession or also doesn't guarantee that they're going to cause one. It remains to be seen what's going to happen, but it is possible to get the budget under control, to get that debt to a manageable level, and basically to be responsible financially. So it's possible. But if your government doesn't take care of it for you, what can you do yourself? Well, it's often tempting for people to essentially gamble in financial assets, but there's a word of caution here. Warren Buffett says the stock market is increasingly casino-like and young investors need to remember this one fact of financial life to avoid the mess. You don't want to get caught up in the drama. You don't want to get caught up in the hype. This is coming from Warren Buffett. What does he say is the one fact of financial life to avoid the mess? Well, he says, remember who is really making money from your gambling, the house. One fact of financial life should never be forgotten. Wall Street, to use the term in its figurative sense, would like its customers to make money, but what truly causes its denizens juices to flow is feverish activity, feverish activity. In other words, people buying and selling, thinking they're going to get rich, chasing trends, chasing momentum, making a lot of decisions, overreacting to news and hype, overreacting. You don't want to overreact. Okay. Modern brokerage firms at times entice investors into stocks or complicated derivatives with new and fancy features on their trading apps, but they aren't doing it to help the average retail investor. They're doing it because they make money from fees on every trade. That means the more trades, the better it is for the house, even if that's not true for investors. So I can't give financial advice. In fact, I don't even know if Warren Buffett can give financial advice, but it seems like the strategy would be to take a calm, cool, collected approach, devise a portfolio strategy, slowly enter into it, and be patient. That seems like a good move. You don't want to chase hype. You don't want to chase the latest stock trends, the, largest new, the latest news. And this leads me to our meme of the day. I put two children through Harvard by trading options. Unfortunately, they were my broker's children. <laughs> I like this one. Very nice. So thank you guys for watching. Stay safe out there. I'll see you soon.